Welcome or welcome back. I'm the Ink Archivist here again with the part two of the Goulet Ink Haul. This time we'll be taking every single sample that I got from that ink haul and swatching them out for you. Sorry this took such a long time. It took a while to get all of this uh, done. And so for each of these samples, I'm going to have the swab on the left hand side and then I will have the title in a Hokuro 2.0 nib followed by a Fonte with the Quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, and that sentence again with a fine hokuro nib. So that should give you an indication of what this will look like in a very broad nib, a medium nib, and a fine nib. The first ink that we have here is Color vs. Witch by Starlight, which was an exclusive to Goulet. Now one thing I'll be interested in talking about as I do these is uh, any further experience I've had with these inks over the past few weeks or how my opinion has continued to form about them. Now I haven't put Witch by Starlight into a pen. I think this is because I'm a little bit afraid because <laughs> the Colorverse Glitter inks are definitely the most difficult of any of the, the shimmer inks that I've tried so far. They are definitely the hardest to clean out of a pen and they've refused to write or have uh, clogged up several pens of mine. So it's definitely a bit temperamental. And uh, the notice on Goulet about how to handle it is Good reading if you're interested in these inks. Next up is Pelican Edelstein Olivine. I had high expectations for this ink, but uh, I wasn't really all that impressed by it. It's too much of a forest green. I thought it would be a little bit more of an olive tone, and it didn't really get there for my preferences. But as it is an Edelstein ink, it is a lovely writer. So if you do like this color, this should definitely work out for you. I did also want to mention that someone had commented that they wanted to see all of these swatched out and that was very helpful for me to know that people would be interested in it. So if there's anything you ever want to see, I can't guarantee that I'll always be able to get around to it. There's so many video ideas that I have and just so little time to get to them all so it's hard for me but it at least lets me know that you'd be interested and that I can move forward with an idea and there will be, you know, an audience that wants it. So I really appreciate it. Next up is Mandarin, another Edelstein ink. I did try to group everything up, and this is one that I actually bought a bottle of, which you can see, and that was in my Cult Pens ink haul review, because as soon as I swatched this ink out, I knew that I had made a giant mistake in not purchasing it earlier. Again, I think I can really stand behind saying that Edelstein has wonderful quality. I've never had a problem with them. They write very consistently across all the different colors that they have. So if you like one, you'll probably be happy with any of their ink as long as you like the color. Basically just goes down to preference on that. And I like this one quite a lot. Now I know I'm quite zoomed out here to fit in all of the six inks that I'll have on each page. For a total of 18, there's quite a lot. Um, so I will be showing a close up of every page once I'm finished with them. So don't worry if this is a little far away and you're trying to get um, a better view of the detail, you'll be able to pause once I slow things down then. So after Mandarin, we'll be getting into the Ferris wheel press inks and I have the Velvet Ballet here, which I had high expectations for again. <laughs> and I was hoping to be able to give this to a friend, but I honestly did not like it. It kind of reminds me of Diamine Oxblood, and those two might make an interesting comparison, but it is kind of that dried blood color rather than uh, a deep cherry red or something, and I thought there would be a little bit more pop of color. With how dark it is and how dark the glitter is, it really blends together in normal writing and you can't see it very well. So I like the idea of this ink conceptually, but in practice I don't think it really works for me. But I know this ink is very popular, so... And I'm not here to begrudge anybody for that. Not here to yuck anybody's yum. So next for the Ferris wheel press inks, we have <laughs> Edward's Gardens, which as you can kind of see there from the shot of the vial there, uh, I absolutely demolished this ink and got a full big bottle of it. I absolutely love this ink. I think the teal blue color is absolutely gorgeous and it has this gold shimmer and this heavy red sheen. It is such a delight, especially on Tomoy River paper. 
I've been writing uh, grocery lists and little notes with it and my Kaveco Toyama teal and those are just a perfect combination as well and it looks so good. <laughs> So I knew this would be a fitting choice for my first big bottle of Ferris Wheel Press ink. Now I have been disappointed as a side note that that larger size of ink bottle still has spilling problems. It seems like the little one is the only one so far that I haven't gotten to spill all over my hands. <laughs> but the two larger sizes, uh, not so much, unfortunately. Ferris Wheel Press's shimmer inks are kind of middle of the road, not as hard as Colorverse to deal with, and not as nice as, say, the uh, Diamine Chameleon shimmers, which are kind of my favorite. The next ink is Jacques Urban's Rule Donk, perhaps? And this is kind of a cult favorite color. It's an interesting, like, peachy, almost nude tone. And I, I haven't had the opportunity to do much with it so far, but I do really like it still. And, um, and I'm looking forward to playing around with it some more. I will say from my limited experience with this ink, it seems a little bit dry because with the desaturated color and that dryness, I was grinding it out with that 2.0 stub nib. It was very difficult. There are a few that I'll show you today that I just had a hard time getting to lay down on the page with that 2.0 that really struggles with those desaturated inks. So that is it for the first of the three pages. So I'll be giving you the uh, slow pan here <laughs> of everything. And again, feel free to pause if you wanna see anything in a little bit more detail there. But that's it for this one. So we'll be moving on to the page beneath it. Starting out on this page, we have another Jacques Urban ink. I think there are four total. This is Boquet Diantan, and I will have some little comparisons at the end if you stick around. And this is one that I paired up against Edelstein Rose Quartz, <laughs> because as I was swatching out this for you guys here, I thought, hmm, this does seem a bit similar to that ink. So we'll definitely be seeing how close these are or aren't later. And again, as I kind of had problems with the previous ink, I'm definitely having a little bit of that here. Not as bad, but still notable. And I will say kind of as a blanket statement on Jacques Urban inks, they tend to be very well behaved. In fact, they are some of the only inks that people who use antique pens recommend for using in your vintage fountain pen. Their main line is very gentle on your pen and have a lot of great properties to them. Blue Calanc is the next ink. It's another Jacques Urban regular line ink. This is very similar to Blue Pivanche, which we'll be going over in the comparisons, but this has more of a teal edge to it, whereas Pivanche is a more true blue. Also, I apologize as always, I'm going to butcher the French names, so I'm trying to just make it so you can understand at least what ink I'm referring to. <laughs> uh, but yes, I thought these two would be exceptionally close, so I thought I definitely needed to break out the other one and do a comparison. Personally, I have a lot of inks in this sort of teal range, so I don't think this is something that I would pick up. It does remind me of Diamine Bliss, and Pivanche reminds me of Edelstein Topaz, if you have either of those. Fair Degree is the next ink, and this is potentially the ink I was the most excited of out of all of the samples that I got. I was so excited for this ink. I was looking at every single review. I was possessed. I was obsessed. I needed to have it. I actually thought about just getting a full bottle of it immediately and skipping this whole sample step because I thought surely I would love this ink. Um, I love gray, I love teal, put them together and you should have a winner. But once I got the sample, I was completely disillusioned to it. It was a very big disappointment. 
I think um, looking at it, it's probably because there's so much gray to it and a lot of blue and there's not really that much green to it. There's not that much pop to it. So I will be showing this against Diamine Celadon Cat because I did mention in that video that they were quite close. I did purchase two Lamy ink samples, the first of which is Lamy Mango. And this was a coordinating ink, I believe, to go with the Mango Fountain Pen that came out uh, a couple years ago for their candy collection. And I definitely thought that this ink would be too yellow for me, but I thought I would give it a go anyways, as we've kind of discussed with their degree. Sometimes you are just completely wrong about something that you'll think you'll like, and that's why it's really good to get a lot of samples, especially when you're starting out so that you make sure that you're investing in bottles that you're, that you're going to like and use over time. And that was definitely the case though with this ink. It was just too yellow for me. I don't think I'll be getting a bottle. So the second Lamy ink was Amazonite because I saw so many people using this ink. I just had to know what was up. And it is a very beautiful teal color. Again, there's a lot of competition already in my collection for that color. So it would be hard for me to justify getting another bottle. But this does have lovely properties along with the mango. The mango has some heavy shading, which is very lovely. Amazonite is too deep and saturated to have a lot of that but neither of them had spread or feathering on anything that I've tried them on so far. They write very nicely. I can't tell any particular dryness or wetness with them. So pretty standard run of the mill kind of inks. A lot of brands, uh, particular inks tend to be that way. So the last ink for this page is Organic Studio Henry David Thoreau, which is a green ink with a red sheen to it. And this ink was frightening <laughs> when I opened up the vial. Uh, part of it, especially around the lip of the vial, had turned into a goop. So I know that can happen with heavy sheeners. Whatever they're adding to give it a sheen does seem to gum up over time. So if you're getting something like this or... Ralph Waldo Emerson, which I'll cover shortly, or any other brands of inks that have this sort of high sheen to them, you definitely want to make sure that you're properly wiping off the edges of your ink bottles. I hear that the interior of the cap can start to gum up if you're not careful, and also just be careful that you're not leaving this inside of a pen. If it's gumming up in a vial, you can only imagine what it's doing to your favorite pen. So. That's it for the second round here, so I'll be showing a close-up of this. And I will be talking a little bit more about Henry David Thoreau when we get to the comparisons, but suffice it to say for now that I don't think it's for me. So with the tearing of this, we'll be moving on to the third and final page of this. Also, you could play a little fun game at home of noticing <laughs> how much inkier my hand gets over the course of this video. So I have Ralph Waldo Emerson here. And it's kind of the blue corollary to Henry David Thoreau's Green with Sheen, and it had gooped up considerably less than that ink. I will say that Henry David Thoreau did have a lot of flow to it, which was definitely pleasant. And this ink, while having less, you know, goopage, also had less of that flow. So I assume that there's some sort of correlation there. Now, I would have expected with the properties of these inks that they would feather or spread a bit. I didn't notice that on either of these. Definitely a little heavier on the show through on the back, though. So Platinum, Lavender, Black, and after this, Citrus are the next two inks, and they have an interesting quality to them where they lay down brighter and lighter, and then they dry into a darker version. This ink was also featured on the Waterproof episode of the True Fay ink palette subscription that I started a month ago. So if you want to see a waterproof test with this ink, I would definitely recommend that you check that video out where I give it the dunk test. 
but there's definitely a lot to love about this ink. From that waterproofness to the cool quality of it drying to a darker tone, I definitely thought that I would like this less than the citrus black and that was completely not the case. Not sure if I want it enough to have a full bottle of it, but I think uh, time will tell on that. Citrus Black was a little bit like Verdigris for me, where I thought this would be a home run. No brainer. <laughs> I do like writing with yellow and this dries dark into kind of a greenish gray mixture. So that seems all good, but I don't know if I really like how it ends up drying. So I'm not quite sold on this one yet. So. I think I just need more time spent with this ink to develop a better opinion of it. But if you like yellow, but you want to be able to read what you're writing afterwards, uh, this definitely will solve that issue for you. So next we have Roaring Clinger's Alt Gold Grune, which is a very popular ink, and this is a total home run for me. I love that it's kind of this murky green, yet it still maintains a level of clarity and pop to it. I think it's wonderful, and the cost per milliliter of this bottle is quite good as well. And it's quite available, you can get it just about anywhere, even Amazon. <laughs> well, Prime ship it directly to your house, so... I definitely think this is going to end up on my shelf eventually. Kind of a nice one to add to a birthday wish list, maybe. <laughs> so we will round this out with the two Irameko inks that I got, starting with Date Kokoro. And I assume for these two inks it will kind of be like the lavender black from platinum where it'll just grow on me over time um, they are a little bit similar to that ink in that they kind of change over the dry time and i also hear that these change across different papers so it would definitely be interesting to get them and do my sort of normal four different paper swatch test to show you I am very hopeful that Sailor will decide to make these in the collection of smaller bottles. They've come out with those for some of the Manyo inks, and I'm hoping that they'll do it with these inks as well because it makes it so much easier for me to justify purchasing inks if I can get a smaller quantity of a larger variety. Like I think a 20 ml bottle really does it perfectly for me unless I really love an ink and want it to always be around. So. We'll see if that happens, but otherwise, I'm looking forward to trying these two out more in the future and getting a better sense of if I like and need them. But that is all 18 inks. So if you've made it this far, you have to tell me which ones that you like, which ones are your favorites of the ones that I decided to purchase and also consider if you haven't subscribed, perhaps go ahead and do that if you've made it this far. <laughs> um, I always appreciate it and I hope that these videos are helpful for you. But with that out of the way, there's only a few things left to do. And next we'll be moving on to a comparison of four of the inks that I showed today. So we're starting out with Verdigris and we'll be showing that against Diamine's Celadon Cat. I had mentioned in the Celadon Cat slash Sailor's Warning video that Celadon Cat was kind of what I was hoping Verdigree would be, and I had said it as an offhand remark. I didn't really think about it all that much, to be honest, but putting them side by side, I really <laughs> see that that is true. They are honestly so much closer laying on the page than I thought they would be, and yes, Celadon Cat is exactly what I wanted that ink to be. And then secondly, we have Blue Calanc and Blue Pivanche next to each other. And you can see that they are similar, but they are not. I thought they would be near identical, and that is not the case. Um, so if you're between these two, hopefully that this will help you kind of figure out which one is more in your wheelhouse.
So stacking Jacques Urban's Bouquet de Anton against Edelstein's Rose Quartz, I honestly just like Rose Quartz better. <laughs> and I guess that's pretty fortunate considering I have a bottle of this one and not the other one. I will say that does make me a bit biased. We have a predilection towards things we already own, so take that with a grain of salt. Um, for that one and this next one, which is a comparison of Henry David Thoreau and Diamy November Rain. These two are extremely, extremely close to each other. Um, shockingly so. I think November Rain is slightly a bit more, you get a little bit more green in it, but they're both heavy sheeners. And I do have a bottle of November Rain and I did like it a little bit more. I feel like the green gets a little bit too lost on that Henry David Thoreau, but they're so close to each other and November rain is a bit harder to get your hands on, so I wouldn't worry too much about the difference. And here is a final look at those samples again. I am very pleasantly surprised at how many that I like, <laughs> and I'm even more surprised at the ones that I thought I would love and ended up not feeling so hot on after this. So. Again, I would love to hear your opinions on all of these and times that you've been surprised by samples and kind of felt let down or pleasantly surprised. Let me know and thank you for joining me. Have a good one. Bye.